Impact Interview is sponsored by the Pocono Mountains, where small town charm meets big adventures. Book your trip today by visiting PoconoMountains.com. Well, welcome back. Time for our impact interview, and I'd waste way too much time going over even the highlights of this guy's bio. Let's put it this way. If you are at all familiar with college football, you know Chris Fowler is in tier one when it comes to announcers and even historians of the game. Always a pleasure to have ABC and ESPN's lead play-by-play -play man join us. Chris, thanks so much for coming on the show. It's always a lot of fun. No, it is for me, too, and I always want to say hello to the people in that part of the world. That's a, a special place for me, so uh, looking forward to it. All right, well, look, with the shifting TV contracts, this will be the last ABC ESPN whiteout for the immediate future, and worse yet, we don't want to get, to, we, don't, we don't get to see you in Kirk Herb Street in Happy Valley this weekend, and look, I know you love tennis, and I don't want to over-dramatize the situation, but I envision you and Herbie somewhat like Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer <laughs> at Roger's last match, sitting down kind of emotional, but certainly the network has been a big part of growing the whiteout, and I'm sure it's been a nice ratings boost as well. Wax poetic for us for a moment about the whiteout and give us a memory or game that stands out for you. Man, I hope Kirk and I never get as emotional on the air as Roger and Rafa or we better <laughs> retire. That was just seeing <laughs> legends like bawling, but no, I, I got it. No, I mean, for me, just being in Beaver Stadium in a regular game is special. Some folks there will know that I had never been exposed to college football, period, until the 1974 season. My dad took a job in the faculty. He moved to State College. Um, here comes Stanford into Beaver Stadium, and Cardinal had the lead. Penn State drove down late in the game uh, methodically, as was the uh, – way in those Joe Pa offenses, Jay, and they, they won the game, and it was thrilling, and, and it was, I didn't even know that much about the team. I just took in the atmosphere and saw kind of the electric magic of, of college football at that level, and I was hooked, and it put me on this light path. Without that exposure, I don't know that I would have ended up doing college football, because I've been a fan of pro sports predominantly when you grew up in Illinois. I owe my career in college football to those early days at Penn State, so I get nostalgic every time I go back. The whiteout is next level. It is my favorite annual scene in the sport. I've had the privilege of broadcasting quite a few. Some have been incredible games matching the atmosphere. And yeah, I am bummed out not to be there for this season's edition. We had sort of countered on it. We got rerouted um, by a route in the big house last week and Minnesota's loss and some of the things that happened. And uh, it wasn't in the cards for us, but uh, it is it is sunk in as the week has gone on. And I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm I'm blessed. I'm grateful. But this Saturday, you know, damn it, I wanted to be there at the White House. And, you know, we <laughs> deal with life's disappointments. We get rerouted sometimes in this world, and I'm old enough to know that you got to make peace with that. Well, Chris, college football, as you know, is rooted in traditions that really make it unique from the pro game. Um, how much do you think the moves of Oklahoma, Texas, USC, and UCLA either help or hurt college football in the future? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a shock to the system. So any traditionalist is going to have to live with the uncomfortable feeling of, of conferences getting realigned. But there really is no point in whining about it because it's just beginning. It's going to continue. I think that every time there's a shift away and a loss of something, there's also a gain. And I think having USC and UCLA in the Big Ten um, will be exciting. I'll, I'll just be watching as a viewer, uh, not getting to work those games. But that'll be it'll be cool because it's it's new and it's fresh. Um, and there's really no point in, in lamenting the fact that we're not going to see Oregon play USC or Cal play UCLA or whatever. That those traditions will go away. New things will be born. Um, you want them to work out. I think it's a hell of a lot better than having Rutgers and Maryland join. If you want to know the truth. Uh, even though it's just an un unnatural geographic thing, and, and maybe it'll lead to further expansion. Oklahoma and Texas and the SEC, and again, interesting. It just adds to the depth of an amazing conference already. We, we will get a chance to broadcast the, the beefed-up SEC, and I, I think it's going to be pretty exciting, you know, to have, to have Texas play Georgia and Oklahoma play Alabama, et cetera. Hey, Chris, uh, after Penn State's tough loss to Michigan and with Ohio State coming in next week, do you think this becomes in some ways a must win for Penn State, not just for trying to win the conference, but also in terms of national perception? Yeah, well, it's certainly must win for trying to win the conference. If they, if they keep the goals of, of winning the division and getting to Indy 
uh, on the front burner, then obviously you, you got to have this one. I, I think it's just one of those those games where you, we need to, we need to learn what Penn State's about. I mean, Ohio State's a hell of a tough assignment. Week after, I mean, Minnesota's difficult too, but that was a shock to me. Um, the way they got run over with Michigan. I mean, I, I don't put a whole lot of credence in in statistical rankings sometimes this early in the season, given the level of competition. But for a defense that was ranked in the top five to give up 400 plus yards and just get run over like that and, and physically overpowered, it's not just a loss, as you know, uh, scrap. Do people call you scrap on this show? I don't know if that's, that's acceptable. <laughs> they call but, me lots of things. <laughs> okay, I know, but but you know, you know, you know, you lived it for a long time, I and mean, that is a. That is a destruction of a team's manhood, their self-image, to be run over like that. So responding to that against Minnesota, regrouping, I mean, you learn a lot about a team after a loss. Chris Fowler always delivers and is impossible to keep for just a few minutes. Way too much good stuff to include, include here. So go to our NittanyGameWeek.com for our full interview with Chris, along with other web-exclusive content. Still to come, the game's not the only reason for a road trip. Andrew Callista shows us some of the good eats in the home of the big house, Ann Arbor, Michigan. We're heading into the final minutes on Nittany Game Week.